So hi everybody, thank you for joining uh, Steering Marinas and watching this video here. As promised to you guys, I told you that uh, I, the reason I started this channel was uh, so that uh, all the fellow Marinas can benefit from not only my experience but also the experience of each other. And in that spirit today, I have a very experienced master with me, an experienced mariner with me who has been sailing for more than 20 years on uh, merchant ships as well as offshore vessels, Captain Abhiranjan. And uh, today I just want to have a quick chat with uh, Captain Abhiranjan on career in merchant ships versus career on offshore vessels. So we are going to be talking about both kind of ships. We are going to keep the discussion very short. So if you have any further questions regarding what we'll talk about, you can put your comments um, in the comment section. You can post your questions and uh, we'll try to answer them later. But uh, today's focus is on career on merchant ships versus career on offshore vessels. And Captain Abhiranjan will share his experience of more than 20 years, which is a vast experience. And he has been a master for many years now. So let's get started with Captain Abhiranjan. Captain Abhiranjan, welcome to Steering Manners. Thank you for sharing your experience and joining um, our channel here. Um, my first question to you, sir, is that uh, what do you mean by merchant ships and what do you mean by offshore vessels? Can you just tell us the difference? First of all, thank you very much to uh, inviting me in uh, this platform in your channel. And uh, congratulations, Captain Sam, or uh, should I say doctor now? Uh, congratulations on that as well. Uh, well, merchant ships uh, are mostly transporting goods, as we know. And there are particular uh, rules, regulations, implications, STCW, IMO requirements to be followed. Uh, the same is with offshore vessels also, but it is mostly project driven. So there are in uh, offshore ships also, there is uh, a mini cargo vessel, like uh, see, these are called platform supply vessels. So they, their, their uh, tenure of job is short like from only maybe 80 miles from A to B, you know, so the, 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 the transportation which they are doing is probably 80 to 100 to 200 miles, whereas a cargo vessel would probably, a merchant ship would probably do 3,000 miles, 2,000 miles intercontinent, you know. Uh, so this is the main difference. Otherwise, uh, there are other local uh, implications as well, regulatory implications as well which probably a merchant ship wouldn't be applied to because they are mostly uh, on foreign waters traveling and mm, the whole world knows they are, they are there in a country for a small time, for a small amount of time. Whereas a platform support vessel or an offshore vessel or a diving support vessel, they are uh, there for in the area, in the wherever they are working, they are there for a longer period of time. All right. So that is... One of the things. Right. Um, Abhi, uh, can we also make it very clear that when we say cargo ships, we actually mean tanker vessels, container vessels, bulk carriers, which are carrying vast amounts or small amounts of cargo across internationally or nationally. Can you tell us more examples of what do we mean by offshore vessels? What, what do they specifically do? Uh, like you gave us a couple of examples. Can you give us some more examples on what is, what is it that you do or what is it that you do or what is their role? in terms of you know, Understood. operations yes so so as we know merchant ships just a quick one merchant yes. ships are bulk carriers container ships uh, lng lpg oil tankers crude oil carriers and in the tankers also there are uh, again defragmentations like uh, crude oil tankers product carriers then chemical tankers you know so there are so many tankers then gas carriers is lpg lng so uh, that that becomes the uh, cargo ship side now the offshore is all is a platform supply vessel, a diving support vessel, a vessel which conducts ROV surveys or underwater surveys. A heavy lift vessel is an offshore vessel as well. Uh, a vessel with a huge crane and capability of laying pipelines on subsea. Uh, then even a dredger would be called an offshore vessel. Okay. In that case, and uh, thank you. So these are uh, offshore vessels. Sense. All right. Um, now, Captain, you have sailed on both cargo ships as well as on offshore vessels. Can you just uh, not going into your personal reasons, of course, but can you give us one of the reasons why you decided to shift from cargo ships and uh, you shifted to merchant offshore vessels? Uh, just one reason why you did that. Well, the, 
if anybody is shifting from a, a merchant ship to a offshore ship it will be always uh, the personal reason will always be a prime motivator initially but then slowly you will uh, want to justify which is better because you know someone who's been in both sides of the field uh, knows uh, which one is better right so, so the salary is the salary more on offshore vessels when we say personal reason is the salary more on offshore vessel as compared to commercial ships i would say not not that much but okay. uh, yes uh, the young officers and all do have a little bit of salary difference they are high paid uh, and sometimes low paid also again it depends on the company what is the economic background of the company okay. so it can be as little and it okay. can be as much right and uh, do you have cadets on board offshore vessels as well do you guys employ cadets in your company mostly it has been seen no mostly no. it has okay. not been seen right uh, but yes there are few companies uh, who do have this policy of having cadets on board as well right so for a young mariner what is the best time to shift after they get their second mate class uh, this uh, third mate second mate ticket that is the time for them to shift earliest time for them to shift would that be the best time after they finish the cadet ship so what i have seen uh, with the competency of uh, uh, new era hmm. is uh, that it is best to do and start your career in merchant ships hmm. and get your fundamentals clear because at okay. the end of the day it's a floating vessel right and you have to have your fundamentals clear right and then at a, even at a younger age as a third officer or a second officer mm-hmm. you could have that shift okay uh, there are many advantages and disadvantages of being in offshore as well right uh, but again merchant ships also have their own uh, you know right. own good things yes absolutely so uh, captain we have been hearing about uh, the challenges that uh, cadets and young mariners are having in finding jobs these days of course that challenge is there and uh, after covid we don't know how it will go but uh, how easy in comparison do you think it is easier to find employment on commercial vessels as compared to offshore or is it the same you think there are same challenges because you have been applying in both so do you think it's easier to find employment on commercial vessels or offshore or the same so sam as we know covid has really uh, hit the world below the belt and uh, in merchant ships all over the world you know that uh, merchant ships offshore vessels together you know more than 75% of the world's trade is is being transported by ships so ships are never going to be unless water is there ships are never going to be out of date or right. out of job yeah uh, what has happened is demand and supply probably uh, i would say and uh, the supply of ships are getting higher and higher Okay. uh so i would say uh, with seeing the present scenario uh the young mariner should have patience little bit okay. uh, okay. i know the times are difficult and job scenario is really really bad but soon mm-hmm. to uh, be over and uh, the offshore offshore industry also is hugely uh, picking up you have heard about renewable resource of energy so you know solar power and wind power and even uh, um, hydro power is you know see right out at sea so right. people are uh, countries are looking into renewable resource of energy there soon will be and probably uh, already out there are uh, regulations which uh, imply that every country has to reduce their carbon printing and uh, have to have renewable resource of right. energy right and the best place to put it is at sea right because they have all three of it hydro solar and wind right so uh- so uh, another question i want to ask you is of course when uh, young mariners or experienced mariners they shift from merchant ships to offshore vessels is there any additional training required other than of course their coc they have their second mate coc or chief mate or master coc what additional training is required for them to shift from commercial ships to offshore uh commercial ships to offshore there are two basic things which is required one is h2s course which is has to be opito approved so mm-hmm. there's opito is this international body who, right. which rec, uh, the whole world recognizes that right. uh, and also a bosiet uh, a bosiet or a huet all all helicopter evacuation uh, okay. techniques 
Right. Uh, mainly because uh, offshore vessels do work in fields, oil fields, right. which is a high H2S uh, hazards. Right. Uh, hazardous. And also because they mobilize and demobilize, they join and leave the ship on a helicopter sometimes. Right. So this uh, training has to be there. And it is a val this, this training has a validity. Right. Right. And uh, uh, usually it doesn't have to be out of the pocket and it has been done by the company. It has been taken care of, taken care okay. of the company. Oh, thank you very much. Um, also, of course, uh, I mean, common sense dictates, but anytime you can shift from offshore to commercial, there is no issues with shifting from offshore to commercial. Is there any challenge that the officers will face if they shift the other way from offshore to commercial ships? What do you think can be any, any challenges that they can face when they shift? The only challenge I see is not the experience because they have mm. experience in offshore. So the mm. only thing which would, would be that they have to come down on their rank, one rank below. Mm. Uh, I believe the higher ranking officers, uh, there is a scarcity. The, mm. the supply is not much. Mm. So they could be taken in the same rank, the high officers. But uh, the lower officers uh, could be, you know, they could come down on a rank or two. Right. And, uh, for people who are trying to find jobs in offshore vessels, uh, I don't want you to name any companies or anything like that, but what is the best way of them um, to, if they're trying to shift and they're trying to find jobs in offshore vessels, how do they go about, uh, are there any specific countries that they should be targeting any, like, what are your tips if they're trying to apply for jobs in offshore side? I would say do an internet research on where all during these times, actually since 2012, the oil market has really fallen down. Okay. And offshore is all about oil now, slowly mm. picking up for renewable resource of energy. Yes. So I would say to do inter internet research where all already established and uh, the oil markets are growing. They are, yeah. people are investing in, oil majors are investing on growing their oil fields. Mm. So there has to be a bound of, uh, uh, traffic of offshore vessels and yeah. to be ready like sometimes what we seafarers I've seen have is uh, we are not ready because we are in vacation yeah. but the ship is not going to wait for, for him That's uh, right. to finish off the vacation so you are That's you right. might be very capable and it might be uh -huh. a very apt job for you right. but right. you are not available that's why the ship has taken somebody else Right. Uh, so you have to make up your mind on that and, and okay. plus Contract periods are short, so you can have that sacrifice there to yeah. get in and then have your vacation. Right. Um, in that relation, I just want to ask you whether you had any experience if, um, especially uh, in certain countries, do agents or employers, do they try to cheat seafarers and they try to promise them jobs and charge money? Have you had any experience like that? Are there people around who, who have told you that there are people who cheat uh, seafarers or not cheat, but ask them for money, which is not the right thing to do according to Maritime Labor Convention? Are there like dubious agents around in the world who, who do that? Or should the seafarers be aware of them? Should they be wary of them? That's I would say this is a word of caution for all uh, new joiners. Yeah. That because uh, of, uh, because sometimes it, there is a delay in, in their recruitment, mm. they do tend to go for false promises and all by the agents. Mm. And it is there plenty in, in the whole world, mm. mostly in the second and the third world countries. Mm. And I would say not to, not to go for it. Not to go for it. Yes. And thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, uh, Captain, uh, thank you for talking to us. But just one last question before uh, I, I finish this interview. Don't want to make it too long. Uh, can you just um, talk about a couple of advantages and disadvantages working in merchant ships versus commercial uh, versus offshore vessels. You you mentioned a few, but just uh, two in each. Like uh, advantages of working on offshore vessels versus uh, merchant ships or cargo ships. What do you think are some of the advantages and disadvantages? Okay, advantages. I would say working in offshore is uh, better money. Right. I have always got better money. There could be. Uh, two people out of 10 who would get uh, lesser money as well. So right. there, yeah. as I said before, yeah. but the ratio is less. Right. Uh, better money, short contracts, uh, professional conduct is more in merchant ships right. than uh, um, uh, 
offshore vessels. Offshore vessels, okay. Uh, then loneliness uh, in merchant ships is more, and okay. uh, in offshore vessels it's less because right. there are around 100 people. If you are in a diving support vessel or a project vessel, then uh, there are more number of people to interact and all. So automatically your mind gets diverted. If you are eating, there will be 15 other people eating with you. Right. So it Very good. Do pay, does pay a difference. Right. Uh, thirdly is you are more connected to a project. Like let's say you f if, if there's a project of your revamping your house. So you are so much connected, you are interested, you will yes. probably plan it, you know, right. you'll do. So, so but in, in a cargo vessel, it is monotonous. You know, from A to B, you have to take yeah. cargo. The captain will get a, a message right. of uh, where to take the cargo from load the cargo chief officer will make the load indicator but here you are you are preparing the vessel as per the project and you are actually part of the project so later on after let's say a construction job you are you can it is a matter of pride as well that okay this uh, platform has been you have been a part, part of, of being a part of it absolutely uh, what about promotions uh, are promotions slower on offshore or they are the same or so right time right place uh -huh. is the thing if you have the right experience promotion generally is not being given so right. easily right. Uh, but yes if you are in the right time right place it could be that even if you don't have experience you've got it right. but otherwise promotions are not so fast uh, right. especially in the higher rankings that is on offshore vessels, it's not fast. Is that what you say? Offshore vessels? Yes, yes. on offshore vessels. On offshore vessels, it's not that fast. All right. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Captain Abhi, that for sharing your knowledge. I, I learned a lot. I'm sure our mariners have learned a lot as well. I hope to uh, call you again and uh, ask you to spare some time for us. I know you have a lot of experience in a lot of different areas and you have been working in different countries and you've been... Uh, involved with uh, the shore side of things as well. I want to talk about that on a separate day. Otherwise, this video will become long. So I thank you again. And if there are any questions from my viewers and subscribers, I'll pass them on to you and uh, uh, please try to answer them. Um, uh, thank you for joining and thank you for uh, your time. Thank you, Sam. I will see you again very soon. Thank you, Sam. It was very nice. Thank you.